Hi, I'm John with Hammerhead Industries. We make the GearKeeper tool tethers. I'm going to talk a little bit about the construction of our tool tethers. A very common tether is the coiled type elastic tether. And we make a very ergonomic type tether. Uh, what that means is that it has a very good stretch to it. Um, it has over 75% stretch. So when you're working close to yourself, it's not too long, but you get a nice reach out of the product without a lot of force. There's some tethers that have a very high elastic component to them. Um, they can be said to be shock absorbing, although we only recommend up to five pounds, 2.2 uh, kilograms to a person. So we prefer something ergonomic. So as you reach with a tool, you don't have a lot of uh, retraction force on your body. Uh, secondly, we do uh, reinforced type lanyard extensions that are sewn uh, the lengthwise and crosswise into the lanyard. We don't typically use elastic here because when you sew through elastic, you lose the strength of the product and you can't see what's inside of it. Um, all of our tethers are uh, ANSI standard rated, which means it met a certain performance criteria. It's been tested to that criteria and it's labeled as such with things such as serialization so we can track it, when it was made, part number, uh, load rating of the product, overall length of the product, uh, warnings that are particular and important to the product. Uh, so all these things are incorporated into all of our tool lanyards and uh, that just gives you an idea of uh, this type of lanyard. So I'm going to talk a little bit about different style of tethers, whether it's a fixed lanyard, whether it's a uh, disconnectable lanyard, or whether it's a carabiner attachment type thing. When tool tethering started, it was basically one tether, one tool. I do a fixed end attachment, which means I have a lanyard loop, it goes on to the uh, tool, and it's fixed to the tool. So I'm using one lanyard with one tool. And that was um, worked out well if you only had one or two tools and a dedicated lanyard. As people are going to more like 100% type tethering, where they need to do tool change out, now they have to do things a little differently. One way of doing that is to use a carabiner attachment to the tool. So every tool has a attachment point like this, and then the carabiner simply attaches to it. Now there's different types of carabiners, and since they all have to be locking gate, if you're going to do a lot of tool change out, we recommend going to a uh, automatic locking, which is very quick, versus a screw gate type system. Another way of doing that is we make a side release attachment system, which this attachment goes on all the tools, similar to the way the, the D-ring is on it. But now my tool attachment is a very fast uh, tool connection like this. So it's very quick. So if you're doing a lot of tool change out, you can improve your productivity by doing that. Now I'd like to talk about personal tool tethers, which are the typical coils. We call them personal tool tethers because they're attached to the person. Uh, they're the most common used out there. Uh, they come in different weight ratings. Most of ours are either in a 5, 10, or 15 pound weight rating. Now please remember that we suggest that no more than 5 pounds, 2.2 kilograms uh, to a person. So what we try to do is a good, better, best. We do a what we call an economy tether. Uh, it's still a very good quality, but it's hitting the price point with a zinc locking gate carabiner that's a screw gate. And this is really for what we call the disposable market. Someone comes to a job, they're only going to be there for six weeks, six months, and when they leave the job, they're going to take the tool tether with them. Then we go to what we call our deluxe uh, super coil, which is a higher vis, higher elastic, higher capability, uh, better durability, fancier, more expensive carabiners that are quick uh, to take on and off. This would be a product that you give to your employees that they're going to have for years and it's not just being replaced on the job. Now I'd like to talk about anchor tethers. Anchor tethers are for attaching to a structure instead of a person. So if you remember me saying that above 5 pounds or 2.2 kilograms, we really don't want to attach to a person. So this is designed for heavier things or if the condition is such that you don't want to attach to a person like you're working out of a uh, lift or a structure. So what it is is a product that 
has a very long extension and a very high load rating. So as you can see, it's not very, it's not very long, but the construction of it allows a 250% stretch. So I can stretch this from about three feet up to nine feet. So if I'm working in a structure, I've got good mobility for doing something like that. Also, they're rated up at uh, 25 pounds or over 11 kilograms. So for very heavy items, it can handle that load. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about wrist lanyards. Wrist lanyards have some specific applications where if you're working in a condition that you don't want to be able to stretch a tool out, or let's say you just have a dedicated tool and you're working in close confinement, you can use a wrist tether. It's not for a lot of loads, it's not for a lot of tool change out, but if you have one dedicated tool in certain environments, it's a very easy way of, uh, of attaching the tool to your body. A lot of our uh, tool attachments have disconnections on them, so you can easily disconnect tools from your wrist cuff. Now I'd like to talk about retractable tethers. As a remember, the most common being the coil tether works very good if you have one or two tools on you. If you have to go above two tools, this can become an entanglement problem. That's where we recommend going to a retractable system. Now we have a very long history of making industrial strength retractable tethers. It's not made to retract the tool like you would say a key retractor is. It's simply made to retract the tether so you have a very low retraction force not putting tension on the tool. We do them in a one pound, a two pound, and a three and a half pound load rating. The one pound and the two pound have a disconnectable system so you have an easy tool change out. Also they come with a carabiner attachment and we have rotating uh, clamp-on systems which are good for going on to the fall protection. Now one important thing with the tool tethers that are retractable is that the durability of them can be better than a coil lanyard because the tool tether itself is protected. You're not dragging it over things all the time like you are with a coil that's always exposed to the environment. On our tool tethers we use a Spectra nylon line which is uh, better than cable because it can actually absorb some forces, but it's very good for all the twisting and movements that go on. It doesn't break up like cable does. We also do the three and a half pound unit in a webbing type system. So again, that will absorb some forces. It's very flexible. It doesn't break down like a cable would. I'd like to put a vest on to demonstrate application specific tethering with our vest integration system. So we've come out with this product line that allows us to mount tethers inside of a vest so you can tether things like phones, radios, tablets in a manner that it doesn't impact productivity. It's not a coil hanging out in your way. It mounts inside of a pocket very low profile so I still have the use of my pocket and it's easy to take my phone radio or whatever the device is and use it without impacting productivity. Now a lot of companies are making you do things like put your gloves on as, as soon as you go through the entrance. If you're tethering whether you're on the ground or up at heights, you don't have to worry about whether your items are tethered, you're always protected against drops, or you don't have to worry about what things I have to take on and off my body before I go to heights. So we have a product line that's specific for radios, cell phones, tape measures. It can be in a pocket, it can be on a belt. It's a way of tethering without thinking about being tethered. The last component of tethering tools is anchor attachments to tools. A lot of times you have to fabricate an attachment to a tool. Now every company has different ways of doing it. You've seen the ones of doing the taping system where they lay a lanyard on a tool and then they tape it. The tape is a structural attachment to the tool. We do a loop and cinch method where the loop and cinch is actually the attachment to the tool. The tape simply holds that cinch tight. It's a more structured attachment. It uses a lot less tape and it's much simpler to use. So our tool attachment product line is very simple with uh, rotating attachments and basic D-rings. Rotating attachments you'd use on things like screwdrivers or pliers where you got to twist them. Uh, D-rings are on tools that you don't have to twist. It's not the most specific to a tool. It's very generic. You can have this in your tool kit. 
and attached to any tool. If you need specific attachments, then in some cases you might have to think about buying new tools with attachment points in them. With the variety and complexity of tool tethers, we feel that good instructions need to be incorporated with the tool. And the ANSI standards suggest that proper instructions need to be with the tool tethers. For example, a lot of times the most common tether like this is found hanging in a store with no instructions at all. Now, if I'm attaching it just to a D-ring like this, it's pretty obvious how to loop and cinch it around there. But what if I'm attaching this to a hammer that doesn't have an attachment point? If I'm looping and cinching it, it really needs to be also taped. All that information needs to be incorporated with the product to tell you how to properly instruct it. So many times we go to a job site and we see improper tool attachments. So if the tool attachments are not being done properly, you do not have a safe system.